happy Sabbath. Oh, this is Sparky. Sparky's here to join us this week, and we're so glad that you're here too. Um, we are in my room, Jillian's room, so we thought we'd come somewhere new. Um, thanks for joining us. Let's sing some songs to Jesus. Yay! Hey, we're, yeah. okay, we're going to sing a song. You want to join us? We're singing you. Thankful. We introduced that last time, so we thought we would do it again so the kids can learn it with us. Oh, good thing I came it now. It is. I'm thankful I came now. Okay. I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in praise. I want to be Okay, we're going to sing the B-I-B-L-E, and we have some friends. Should we say their names? That are here to help us. Well, we can <laughs> say some of them. This, as you guys know, they met Sparky, right? And they welcome Yeah. This is Sparky. I don't remember if we said Sparky, but... You can't really see his eyes, but he's very cute. And cuddly. Very cuddly. And then you have... This is Kaibab, um, because it's named after one of the trails at the Grand Canyon, because that's where I got him. And these belong to me, and they don't necessarily have names yet. So maybe that's something that you could send in to, oh, or I will hopefully have some names by the next time, but aren't they sweet? They I'm help so me think sweet. about Jesus. This is the cool part about these guys, because did you know we are like sheep, and Jesus is the great shepherd, and he takes care of us. And then there's so many verses in the Bible about chicks and how we are, God wants us to be under his wings protected and so chicks are under their mama's wings so that's why I have these to help me remember so so we're going to be singing the b-i-b-l-e and each animal is going to represent a different oh. letter yes okay you so ready? you get to yep the b-i-b-l-e yes that's the book for me i stand alone on the word of god the b-i-b-l-e one more time and the that spells bible bible the b-i-b-l-e yes that's the book for me i stand alone on the word of god the b-i-b-l-e gonna sing and this little pair is gonna help us this little light of mine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let your light shine. Okay, 
we're gonna sing who's the king of the jungle and who, who is here to help us <laughs> who is the king of that jungle who, who, who is the king of that sea bubble 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 who is the king of that universe the jungle and the sea i tell you boys and girls and happy sabbath i am so happy to be here with you for another nature nugget and this week's nature nugget animal is so exciting and i can't wait to share with you a whole bunch of fun facts so let's jump right in and learn about one of god's amazing creatures shall we let's review the clues so clue number one was they can eat up to 83 pounds of bamboo. And clue number two, they are so lazy. All right, let's think about it. Now this animal is super cuddly and I just can't wait to get to heaven and give it a big old hug because they just look like they would make the bestest friends. All right, do you know what this week's nature nugget animal is? It's a panda. That's right. This week's Nature Nugget Animal is all about the pandas. So we're going to learn all about giant pandas. One of the most loved and well-known animals in the world is, you guessed it, the giant panda. And do you know where the giant panda is native? It is native to China. Giant pandas are recognizable because of their thick white and black fur. They have a white body with black legs, ears, a stripe in, across its back, and a circular markings around its eyes. The white markings help them blend into the snow, and the black markings help them blend into the shadows and trees. Giant pandas live in bamboo forests because of what they eat is the leaves, stems, and shoots of the, of the bamboo plant. Pandas have to eat up to 30 pounds of bamboo each day just to stay full. And it takes about 14 hours each day to consume that much bamboo. Every once in a while, a panda might eat an other plants or tubers or even a little meat. But pandas are very slow moving and gentle creatures. Because of their low energy diet, Pandas avoid stressful or difficult situations and tend to spend most of their time walking around fairly flat areas while looking for food. Pandas usually live alone and only rarely interact with other adult pandas. They don't roar like other bears, but they bleat, honk, or growl to communicate. Although pandas are usually quite docile, they will assert themselves when threatened. Mother pandas especially will attack and protect their baby pandas. Pandas are adorable bears that live only in China and spend most of their time eating bamboo. They are famous for, that's right, their black and white fur and their wonderfully sweet and docile dispositions. Did you know that giant pandas only live in parts of China and are considered a symbol of China all over the world? Did you know that pandas love to climb trees? They love to climb trees to look for food, to escape predators, and of course to find a nice place to sleep. So let's talk about the baby panda cubs. 
Baby panda cubs are born in the late summer and are about the size of a stick of butter. They are born with pink skin and a thin coat of white fur, a long tail, and no teeth. When they are one month old, they will have their black and white markings and open their eyes for the very first time. Do you know what one thing is that I love about pandas? It's their chubby little faces. Don't they have the sweetest, roundest, chubby faces? You just want to pinch their little cheeks. But did you know a panda's chubby face actually isn't chubby? They get their shape from their powerful jaw muscles that are needed to chew their favorite food. Do you remember what that was? That's right, bamboo. Did you know pandas have sharp claws that help them grip trees while climbing? They also have five fingers and an opposable thumb to help them grasp branches. The black markings on the panda also help them to camouflage in the shade. All right, boys and girls, that wraps up another Nature Nugget. I hope you had as much fun as I did learning about the giant pandas. And remember, like the beautiful book Steps to Christ talks about, we can learn so much more about Jesus and nature when we look at the flowers, the falling rain, the rivers. All of it speaks to our heart and invites us to become more acquainted with Jesus who made them all, including the very friendly and cuddly giant panda. As a little girl, Yana knew she wanted to be baptized one day. At 13, she remembered her wish. I'm going to be baptized, she said. So Yana started taking a six-month baptismal class at the Russian-speaking Seventh-day Adventist church that her family attended in Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic. She excitedly told others about her plans to give her heart to Jesus. Olga, her 21-year-old adopted sister in Ukraine, heard the news and announced, I want to be baptized too. Olga began taking baptismal classes in Ukraine and made plans to travel to Prague to be baptized with Yana. Yana was thrilled that Olga wanted to be baptized. Now one baptism would become two. As the day of the baptism drew near, Yana invited relatives and friends to come watch at the church. She also invited her 17 classmates from the only Adventist school in Prague. I'm very excited about being baptized, Yana said. This is a big celebration, and I would be happy if you came. The school principal marveled at Yana's excitement as she spoke with her classmates, many of whom belonged to other Christian denominations or didn't go to church at all. Yana's face was shining with joy. Finally, the big day arrived. Relatives and friends packed the church. Yana was so happy. When she came out of the water, she knew her dream had come true. The pastor asked if anyone wanted to be baptized next time. Yana's younger sister, Esther, immediately leapt to her feet and ran to the front of the church. Two teenage girls joined her. Yana was thrilled. Now one baptism would become five baptisms. Several of Yana's classmates accepted her invitation to attend the baptism. After a little while, three of those classmates, two girls and one boy, decided that they also wanted to be baptized. Yana was thrilled. Now one baptism would become eight. But that wasn't the end. Yana has an older sister named Diana, who is 21 and a university student in Ukraine. Diana traveled to Prague to watch Yana's baptism. Afterward, she said, you know, I also want to be baptized. A month later, Diana was baptized in Ukraine. What is the power of one baptism? The Holy Spirit used Yana's decision to be baptized to touch the hearts of eight other people. One baptism became nine baptisms. After I was baptized, other people also wanted to be baptized, Yana said. Praise God! Hello boys and girls, this is Aunt Fernita and I have a wonderful story for you called A Floating Zoo. Today's memory verse is from Psalms 48 verse 1. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. The message for today's story is we thank God for keeping His promises. 
What do you do when it rains day after day after day? The Bible tells about Noah and 40 days of rain. What do you think Noah did? Noah, his wife, and his three sons and their wives rested safely inside the ark. So did the animals. God himself had closed and sealed the door to the ark. For seven days they waited. And then the rain began, just as God said it would. Rain poured from the sky. It thundered onto the ark's roof. But Noah and his family, the people who loved God, they were safe. The rain poured down all day, every day. Soon water covered all the flat land and the ark began to float. The rain continued to pour down all day, every day. But everyone inside the ark was safe. Noah and his family thanked God for keeping his promise. It was the first thing that they did every morning and the last thing they did at night. Every day they sang songs of praise to the Lord. And still the rain poured down, all day, every day. Noah checked on the animals often. Some snored softly in their cages. They breathed slowly in and out, in and out. Others nibbled on the food God had told Noah to put into the ark. How much longer is it going to rain? Asked one of Noah's sons. It feels as if it's been raining forever. Noah smiled. For 40 days, he answered. God said that it would rain for 40 days. But don't worry, 40 days is not forever. And still the rain poured down. All day, every day. Finally, water covered the tops of the very tallest mountains. No land could be seen. Then God stopped the rain. It had rained for exactly 40 days, just as God had promised. Slowly, the water began to go down. One day, the ark bumped the side of a mountain, and that's where it settled. Noah waited for many, many days. Then he sent out one of the black ravens. The big bird soared across the water, but it found no place to land and rest, so it came back to the ark. Seven days later, Noah sent one of the doves free, but it found no place to land either, so it flew back to the ark. Noah waited seven more right. days. We are so glad that you joined us this week. Thank you for stopping by this online Sabbath school. Jesus is so kind and full of love and beautiful, and we are glad to get to sing to him and to learn stories about him in the Bible, and to worship him, and we'd like to pray to end. God, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you so much that spring is starting to come. Thank you so much that you love us all the time, no matter what, and thank you for your Holy Spirit that you long to give us, to help us, Lord, to help us to be like you and change our hearts, that we love people the way that you do. Thank you for these kids watching today. God, we love you so much, and just pray that um, we would become closer friends with you this week. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Have a good Bye. week. Bye.